a good evening. I'm uh, Daphne and I'm a civil engineer with a transportation and urban planning background. And I'm going to present uh, our, our frustration index. So, why a frustration index? Well, um, we know that writing uni can be sometimes frustrating. The bus is either late or slow or too crowded. So uh, we decided to, to show that. It's actually like... The screen's really, really small. For some ah. And believe me or not, uh, Swiss people do encounter similar uh, situations. Uh, to another example, but... So to do so, we um, computed speed, capacity, and delay separately, and then we combined them to get the overall frustration uh, index. So let's, let's go for a demo. So here you can choose your city, but let's take San Francisco, and then you select your time. And um, the web app enables you to see frustration growing throughout the city. And uh, so the bigger the circle, uh, the circle, the bigger uh, the frustration. And if you click on a circle here, you get the detail of the you get the detail of the uh, frustration level at this uh, particular step. So we're using a level of service rating system, which is, um, so a level of service is a measure used by traffic engineers to um, evaluate the um, quality of, of various transportation elements. So it, it goes from A, which means an excellent quality of service, to uh, F, which is the worst uh, quality of service. So here we've got an overall frustration uh, level of C, kind of bad, um, but the speed is very good, you've got a, a level A, and then capacity, so the bus is, is totally crowded, it's really bad, E, and uh, the bus is a bit late. Um, and if you if you want to, so we can really, like playing with, with, with this web app, you can really distinguish the morning peak hour and the uh, evening uh, peak hour. And if you want to learn more about uh, what's behind the frustration um, index, you're welcome to visit the uh, About page. And you'll have all our uh, formula and all the, the process we use. And another thing is that we propose to um, develop this uh, web app into mobile app which would be a route planner that minimizes the frustration of each user. So um, for example, I don't mind a chronic bus if it's on time, but uh, for someone else it might be very important to have a seat, uh, whatever the trip duration. But now I let Steve talk about the data side. Yeah, very good. Slides here. So what I want to talk about is um, some more of the uh, some more of the nuances of like Daphne gave me wonderful formula and a, and a way to like figure out level of service for these different cities. So how did I put that into a framework where I could visualize it in a similar way across cities um, and really just be able to present this um, in JavaScript? So I just want to talk about some of the tools that I use to do that. Um, so I would say the most challenging part of this project was like just getting all of the data in a workable place that I could use it for a presentation, which is not always like fun because you want to start doing analysis and visualize. But um, we have a large amount of data from three different cities. And as some of the other groups have pointed out, there was just inconsistencies and minor differences that had to be worked through to be able to like really have the data in a place where we could start visualizing it and analyzing it more. Um, so for that, we used Google Refine for a lot of things, for, um, for data cleaning, data validation, data formatting, and some data like trimming and reduction. Um, I think there was a couple questions on this. Uh, I go back to I can't quite visualize it here. Um, but there was all types of little small problems you could find in the data sets for, say, San Francisco. 
uh, one notable problem in San Francisco is the GPS on the buses, like, you know, will trigger and catch, uh, you know, tell where the bus is at. But you, you kind of have to figure out a way to correlate with that with the actual like scheduled route versus like when it actually says it's at a place. Uh, for instance, bus is always idle for say 10 minutes before it starts a route. So if you're at Land's End and you see a bus sitting there, then you know it, as far as our data, it, it it looks like the bus was like 30 minutes early, but you know in reality it could have started two minutes late. So there was all kinds of like little things like that that we had to account for. Um, what Adam mentioned of like correlating things with the Google Transit feed, we were able to do that with San Francisco, uh, not with real time data, but we were able to look at historical data, correlate it, and then see, okay, this bus was actually on time, it just, or right on time, but it looked like it was 10 minutes early. So that, that's what we use Google Refine for, and then we also used a library uh, for Python called Pandas, which has a feature set very similar to the R language. And that was really useful for dealing with like large amounts of data. Uh, you could do MapReduce, do like for all of the level of service calculations. It was a really easy way to work with a large amount of data, run the calculations, and basically pre-process so that we could then later on visualize all this data. So you know Wes is here. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I couldn't, I mean, it's an incredible uh, library, so very cool. Um, I guess if anybody has any questions on that, we have an expert in the room. I know I have some. All right. <laughs> um, and then talking a little bit more about presentation. So we did all this pre-processing so that we could actually visualize it. And so we created like a really small database, but we still had to do kind of like some calculations on the fly. Uh, you know, we have this selector where we want to like take a range of time and then get all the data for that. So we still kind of had to do that real time in a web application JavaScript. And so there, um, we use D3 and this library called CrossFilter, which allows you to do just really, really, like you can take a CSV that's like a gig and you can actually do analysis on it like in a browser like quickly. So um, D3 actually, I mean, I, I should say is pretty good too, but um, this added like just for, for performance, it allowed us to do a little bit more and without like crashing the browser. Um, and I did want to point out for the backgrounds, uh, you know, so for all the points and vectors, we use D3. Um, but we also did use the Google Maps API for the background map and then use the Google Maps service for like uh, location data. Um, the Google Maps API is, is really great for stuff like this. Um, you know, it, it, it's also just a browser canvas object. So uh, Ian probably has some information on integrating Google Maps with D3. <clears throat> so I, that, that's, that's, that's everything I have. So any questions, uh, you know, you're welcome to answer. I just thought of, I needed <coughs> one thing. I think it would be cool to take the um, uh, the transit crime data stream and put it in there, you know, to kind of overlay it with the frustration index. You know? I mean, there's got to be some interesting correlation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we had, I would say, probably 20 different factors that were of frustration and, you know, we tried to just stick with three that we could show in one visualization, but you're totally right. Yeah. Um, and I know some other uh, people that were involved with this project did like kind of mash up a, a bunch of other data for San Francisco, because there, there's tons of data about San Francisco that you could draw a lot of interesting conclusions from. I'm curious about the capacity metric. Well, two questions. One is how, mm -hmm. how did you balance the different factors in the frustration index? And are those factors, are those coefficients something you can adjust? Either the viewer or the viewer's displayer. But the other question is the capacity. What did that mean exactly? I mean, is it how crowded the bus is or how many people the bus carries? Yeah, definitely knows the answer to that. Yeah. So um, <coughs> to answer your first question, for the moment it's like you can't tune it yourself, but it was the idea of the mobile app, like you can define if uh, you can weight different uh, frustration factors. Um, and for the, um, the capacity question, actually the capacity uh, is directly coming from this chart. So we. We computed rowly each uh, factor, like we've got the row, the capacity, the number of people in the bus, 
And then we use that chart, which is actually um, uh, a real level of service chart used by, um, it's, it's, this chart is coming from the Transportation Research Board. So the traffic engineers are using this information to uh, assess the capacity of a, of a vehicle. So this one, this is a good question because this is the most uh, <laughs> relevant uh, formula we have. Because the other one, we, for the other formula, we did like, we kind of estimate ourselves uh, what, how bad is the delay like and compared with, with the whole data set. But for capacity, it's actually, I think it's the, so the, the unit is like per people, person per seat. So it depends per, we had to do also some research, like each vehicle, like we had different categories of vehicle with different uh, capacity to uh, enjoy So it's really more like occupancy than capacity. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is capacity. Yeah, in fact, I have three questions. Uh, what do you call uh, big data? Okay. Uh, second, did you try other way to display your three metrics? Okay, it's very good what you did, but did you try other things? And the last one is, did you find some difference in the frustration index between Zurich, uh, Zurich Geneva, or San Francisco? Okay, I'll take the two. Can we take the latter two? Yeah, I'll take the two last question and let's be talking about it. Um, so the difference between the cities actually it was because it was like weighted per city per data set we could like show things that are consistent and that are comparable so there are no like not like a big difference like yeah I know are you are you Swiss yeah from Geneva okay. Because I've lived in Switzerland too, and I thought, well, if we compare San Francisco and Zurich, for example, it's like it's going to be a, it's going to be incomparable. But uh, actually, it is. Like, if you go, if you go Geneva, you've got you've got trouble in Geneva too. There will be a lot of frustration, but I don't know the same values. Yeah, it's it's. It's like to the extent <coughs> Swiss expectancy, maybe. Uh, so it, it was it was roughly comparable. And what, what was again the, the second question? It uh, was did you try other way to display the oh, yeah. three factors? And it's very nice to be able to try other way. Yeah. So we didn't bring all the mockups here, but we like we think about other things that they're all only like thinking about plain circle or just a stroke or like playing with just the, the area or with the radius like we had a, a couple of discussion about a lot of discussion about the uh, uh, the visualization itself and the original vision was actually to have some sort of calculation for the city for that week so actually like take all the data calculate can we give a grade even if it's just a simple a to f grade for each city but uh, we never got that yeah. far <laughs> yeah, we wanted to um, and just a quick thing about the first question. Uh, so I would say that this was not a big data problem. Um, to me, big data, like a definition I like, is like something that could, requires multiple computers to store. I mean, there's tons of different definitions. Um, files were large to process and like do it with like real time uh, visualization of browsers. So the files were large in that sense. But I mean, we, we had a week's worth of data, which is a lot of data, like a lot of like, you know what I mean? gigs of data, but not like so much data that we had to have like multiple servers, you know, like that kind of big data. <coughs> Following up on that one, I mean, if we had to reproduce that for the next week and the next week and the next week, you would need to do a go through all the Google Refine and running the scripts again, or is that reproducible and <coughs> bigger than most? Yeah, no, so what I would do is all of the Basically, all the I, Google has like a specific language you use for Google Refine. I mean, I would I would automate that into like a, something that could be done, you know, on a even if it's like offline processing, but like you can get results like pretty quickly. So you know, I would use the Google Transit feed to get the real time data, and then I'd already kind of know ahead of time like, all right, it's going to have these issues. Here's the scripts that I run to correct for those. 
Um, so for what we did, it was like a lot of manual things, and then we could automate those later on, and now it's like, oh yeah, now I know how to handle that sort of problem. 